We are live. What is up in the hizzy? I closed all the other apps on my phone, so hopefully the microphone is not crackly today. My little blue Yeti, maybe she's going to cooperate with me today. And it's important. It's important because I'm starting to put these live streams on YouTube and Facebook, and you guys are not going to believe this, but I started a podcast. I started a podcast. I figured out in my geriatric technical age how to extract the audio file from the video file and put it up on Spotify. And I am over the moon proud of myself. Oh my God. And I'm trying, I'm like, want to brag to my kids, but I also don't want them to listen to my podcast. So I'm kind of like not, so I'm just going to brag um, about myself on here, especially because my mom's in her seventies and she's like, whatever you, I'm so proud of you getting a podcast up. Hi, Annette. My buddy Annette just joined. And then you, Annette. So I'm really excited. So I got this up on Spotify. So hopefully the microphone issues, I figure them out because it's important. It's important to be clean and clear on spot, you know, on Spotify everywhere with your microphone. So it, anyway, it's hopefully it gets resolved. I don't know. It's Monday, September 11th, 2023. And my point, I have some points of business before I get started. Number one point of business, season five of Glow Up, objectively the best show ever released on Netflix starts tomorrow, September 12th. Objectively the best show. It got my kids into makeup and it was so funny because like a couple years ago or a year, my daughter was putting on all this glitter makeup and she looked at herself in the mirror and she was like, oh, I look like such a boy, which was hysterical. And that was because of glow up. And the other thing is that I've interacted with Val and Dom on Instagram, both of them, and they've interacted with me. And now we're best friends for life, even though they don't know that. They don't know that. And that's okay. Um, second point of business is I watched both of the Huntsman movies. Y'all remember those with Chris Hemsworth? Um, and it was Snow White and the Huntsman and then Huntsman and the Winter's War. Oh God. I'm not even going to go into the whole Kristen, what's her face scandal with the director and all this stuff. I used to have a really unhealthy, um, uh, <laughs> I swear to God in it. If you're on here, like I'm just thinking about how you're on here, but anyway, um, anyway, it's okay. It's okay. Um, but the Kristen scandal with the director now, you know, back in the day, because it was what caused her to break up with that guy from what was the vampire movie, Twilight. Anyway, I think now that the director preyed on her. But anyway, I used to have an unhealthy obsession with celebrity news. I have I think that was like an addiction because I was miserable in my own life and I don't have it anymore. And everyone can go live their own lives. But anyway, that those movies were so good and so held up. My kids really enjoyed them. And the costumes, the costumes are to die for. If they didn't win Oscars, they, you're so funny. They should. Annette's not listening. Thank you, Annette. I'm kidding. You can listen all you want. Hi, Marlon or Marlene. It's Marlene, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, um, so the Huntsman movies held up and the costumes are to die for. And so anyway, if you need like a good escape as a movie, the Huntsman movies, they're about to be off Netflix. Okay, and the other thing I want to address during my points of business is my freak freakishly, I think it's a freakishly weird accent. I don't know, maybe it's normal to other people. I'm in Dallas, Texas, I don't know if you guys know this. My family's from Louisiana and I grew up mostly in Houston. So I haven't really thought about my accent much like over my life, but now that I'm producing these live streams and listening to them, especially on the podcast, I'm listening to the audio, I have a crazy accent because if I'm really serious, and I, I have like this Texas accent with the hard R's, lots of R's in Texas. You know, we kind of like, mum, you know, we muddle our vowels and like we would say toilet instead of toilet. I used to have a, I knew a guy, oh my God, so white trash in college. And he referred to girls' asses as their toilets. Ooh, she's got a nice toilet. Oh, this is a nice toilet. I thought that, I mean, it's, it cracked me up, but I was just like, oh my God, it's such white trash. Um, and oil instead of oil, oil, we say oil, but anyway, okay. And then when I'm really excited or having fun or something comes up, I always go Ohio, Wisconsin. And I always switch back and I don't know when I do it. And I have been asked in public, are you from Ohio? How crazy, like it's so weird. And so for a while I thought I've got to figure this out because I do have friends from Ohio, but I've had the Ohio thing for a long time. Okay, I figured it out. I figured out why I have this weird, like, Texas slash Ohio situation happening. <laughs> so I grew up 
on Saturday Night Live and the Blues Brothers. We watched the Blues Brothers. And my family was one of those families that was always saying lines from movies. And then saying, like, name that movie, name that movie. And Blues Brothers was one of our main ones. And then I don't know how old you have to be before you're not, you don't have your an SNL phase in your life. Because before, when there were only, like, a few channels and only a few people had cable, we didn't have the internet, we didn't have computers, you spent your Saturday nights watching Saturday Night Live. <laughs> Skip the Okay, so... So what cast, the cast that was the cast when you were 12 or 13 was like your cast for life. That was your cast that like defined your life. I mean, I used to do Sweeney Sisters with friends. I mean, when Phil Hartman died, I was devastated. Saturday Night Live defined so much of my life. So I was 12 and 13, I believe, when Chris Farley was... The, one of the main cast members and then came out with Tommy Boy and I had the VHS of Tommy Boy and watched it a million thousand million times and knew every single line of that movie and I think that when I'm excitedly having fun and the Ohio Wisconsin like accent comes out I think that's why I think it's because of Chris Farley like I really do that's all I can think of it's weird anyway I just felt like I should explain it because what is my random accent? Because it's not, there's not too much Louisiana. I don't know. Anyway, it's crazy. It's crazy. I do have a Cajun uncle that you can barely understand, y'all. <laughs> like, you need to be drunk to understand it. But don't tell me that. Oh, the Chippendale dance. Oh, my gosh. And I listened to the David Spade and um, Dana Carvey. I mean, I grew up on them. Chopping broccoli. I mean, do y'all remember that? Anyway, so good. I listened to that podcast almost every single time. Every now and then they have a boring guest and I can't do it, but, um, you know, because time is money. Speaking of time is money, we have no ruling in my court case yet. August 2nd, just as a reminder, was um, the, the trial. We're still waiting on the ruling. Someone said it's probably because the Texas courts are backed up. The what is it? It's not domestic court. What is that? I don't know. Anyway, I believe it. So we're still um, we're still waiting on a ruling and the ex has started to go rogue with the money stuff. So it's really making me nervous. It's really making me nervous. No one and no one has joined my community yet. So I'm not earning money and I'm doing all these things. And so the panic, the panic, the cycle of panic wants to drag me in and it's beckoning me all the time like all the time I have to like meditate and go for walks and really creatively cognitively cognizantly consciously family court that's what it is it's a family court thank you and consciously like i overcome overcome the panics you know that, that oh the the agentic feminine is not growing fast enough and the other day i was on Instagram and one of the creatives that I follow was so good. She was she had put up the timeline of when she started and then when she started making money and the timeline to the present day. And one of the things that she really accounted for was how long it took her to build trust. How long it took her to build trust with her audience. And I thought, oh damn, thank you, Annette. I am doing great. Thank you. I appreciate it. I do feel like I'm doing great, but gremlins. So she said it took her time to build trust with an audience. And I thought, okay, okay, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing on these live streams. That's what I'm doing, putting them on Spotify and giving the agentic feminine the room and the, the space to grow as she wants to grow. I'm building trust with my audience and I just need to breathe and trust myself that I'm doing that, that I'm, do that I'm making the right decisions and I'm being authentic and I'm following my passion and... Um, as I'm authentic and real, I, I'm building trust with my audience and I just need to give myself time to do that. So that's what I'm doing, okay? I'm giving myself time and I'm, I've accepted that. Um, which this brings me to my next point, okay? I am always on the lookout for new and useful concepts and theories that I can apply to my life. So there's one theory that I wanna talk to y'all about. We're gonna start with the body keeps the score. Okay, this book is chock-a-block full of really awesome explanations about the human psyche, and I understand my, so, myself so much more now that I've read it, but I understand that it's really, like, it's a textbook, and it's and it takes a long time to go through and really, really absorb everything, and my friends are like, can you just do a series on 
the body keeps the score so I don't have to read it and I don't know maybe maybe I will one day but the first thing that I highlighted in the body keeps the score real quick is he's talking about the new disciplines of neuropsychology and the different studies and and finding understanding the different ways that our psychology works and he says this is written by Bessel van der Kolk Bessel van der Kolk that sounds like a Dutch name I think anyway Research from these disciplines has revealed that trauma, which we all have in childhood, produces, he doesn't say which we all have in childhood, I said that, tr produces actual physiological changes, including a recalibration of the brain's alarm system, an increase in stress hormone activity, and alterations in the system that filters relevant information from irrelevant. Okay, so if everything we're doing, like if everything we're doing is trying to access safety and resources, um, and we have trauma as kids, it trains our brain to start thinking, to, to tell ourselves stories about what it takes to get access to safety and resources, right? And maybe those stories are wrong. So I was listening to a podcast, an interview with Yuval Hariri who wrote Species, and he said, and I've probably said this before, I'm gonna say this a million times, everything, everything is just a story we tell ourselves. Capitalism is just a story. Money, money in and of itself is just a story. Everything is just a story that we tell ourselves. And my question is, is it time to start telling ourselves new stories? Is it time for me to start telling myself a new story? So I don't know if any of you have looked into the science behind placebo and the placebo effect. Uh, Lane Norton is a really good like science slash bodybuilder and he was talking about it and he was talking about the amazing like amazing shit that comes down when pe that people can do if they think they're taking a placebo, but if they believe it, like the major ingredient was belief. It was just belief. It wasn't anything. They weren't actually like taking any medication. And I think that that can apply to anything. And I, I think that's why mantras and affirmations. And if you write something that, you know, as if you're writing something that you want as though you have it or have achieved it, in present state for 21 days, you're so much more likely to achieve it. Like the manifestation and affirmations are really just, I mean, they're a multitude of things and they're, you know, creating energy around us as we go through life. And they, I do think that they are attracting and magnetizing whatever it is that we've decided we want. But we believe that we're gonna get it. We're paving these neural highways that, that of course we're gonna get it if we want it if we're doing these manifestations and these affirmations. And, you know, Byron Katie always says that when you have a thought, question that thought, is that thought true? I'm never, I'm never going to be successful. Is that thought true? I'm never, you know, and, and, and Julie Cameron in The Artist Way says dream big and then dream bigger and then dream bigger and dream bigger. And Liz Gilbert says logic and practicality have no business if you're trying to achieve your dreams, they have no business. You've got to go beyond common sense. So if I want to have like a live stream and a writing career and a public speaking career and go on stage and have tours, I cannot sit here and be bogged down by these whatever stories I've told myself from that were that that began the seeds of which began in a childhood full of trauma and toxicity. I've got to start paving these new neural highways of belief and start telling myself new stories. If everything is just a story and it all hinges on whether or not we believe it, motherfucker, it's time for some new stories. I am not letting this capitalist white supremacist patriarchy, patriarchy determine my life anymore. I'm gonna be in a new, in a new space, in a new space of trust and flow and I'm I'm going to keep going in the direction that I want to go in, regardless of what men and well-paid lawyer judge people. I mean, no one's telling me what to do, really, but they are. I do feel like this like shadow, this heavy shadow albatross following me around going like, you need to make money right now. But also, I feel like I'm going to die if I don't achieve these dreams that I've had since I was a kid. And now I feel like I can achieve them. I mean, I feel like it's possible and I'm writing them down every day in the morning and at night when I'm walking, I'm breathing it in, I'm becoming it, I'm becoming it. So it doesn't fucking matter if it's placebo, it doesn't matter if it's realistic, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. 
because what matters is the belief is my belief in myself. So anyway, that's my theory that I'm working with and that's what we're doing because I'm 45 people and I'm, I'm not going to go and just be, you know, something that's going to make me miserable for eight hours a day and then come home and be miserable for my kids and not be able to afford anything and not be able to travel or afford their college or anything. So anyway, welcome to my TED talk. Okay, now we're going to switch to something fun. I'm going to tell you about my favorite author because I'm going to start her book and I want to invite you to read her book with me. This is my favorite author. This is legitimately a candidate for best author in the United States at this moment. Do you like to read books that are fun to read, but also about substantive shit? Anyway, my book, the book that I'm going to read is Quietly Hostile by Samantha Irby. Samantha Irby is my favorite, 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 favorite author I have. Her, the first book I read of hers was Well, No Thank You because it was recommended in the Week magazine. And then I read Media and then I read her second one, which, and I've loaned it out. I've loaned it out and, to, and that bitch hasn't returned it to me. And that was a while ago, so I just need to get another copy of it because I refuse to not have all copies of Samantha Irby's book. And also her newsletter is hella hysterical. Listen, y'all, she got a blurb from, I mean, The New Republic said America's most talented comic writer. Anyway, it's the best. So if you guys want to read this book with me, go buy it. Like, buy it and get it. And let's read it together because it's because she's freaking awesome. You know, she's the only author that where like I savor her books. I don't read them right away. Like, I don't quickly read them. I savor them. Like, I'll read one essay and then I'll wait and to read the next essay like when I like need it or need to pick me up. But she's the first author I ever read where I felt like, Someone who writes like I write can be successful because the first book I ever read of hers was recommended by The Week magazine and I think it was like one of the best books of the year. And I had never read anyone who was like so irreverent yet she's stream of conscious so you know you can tell like she lets her ADHD go when she's writing. It's so, it's so, it's like a, taking a warm bath but she takes you on a ride. She shivs you in the kidneys which I love. You know, her writing is an experience. And that's how I feel like my writing is. I, it's an experience. So when I saw that she, you could be successful, I mean, now she's been a script writer for um, Lindy, Westo, Sh Lindy West's show, Shrill, which I think is on Hulu, and uh, Sex in the City. Anyway, I can't recommend her enough. She's the best. She and I are about the same age. Um... Let's see. The other thing is that her interviews are the best. If you ever listen, if you ever want to listen to one of her podcast interviews, they're the best. If she was doing a tour like David Darris does, and he charges some bucks for his tours, I would go see her. I would pay a hundred dollars or more. I really would. I would pay money to wa go watch Samantha Irby speak. And you know she would for sure let us have an intermission and a bathroom break. So anyway, if you want to read Quietly Hostile with me, like message me. DM me. Oh, that's so funny, Annette. You love Sex in the City. You know, I could never get into that show. I don't know why. I never got into it. I have a hard time with fictional shows. I really like nonfiction shows um, for some reason. That's just my jam. I just like glow up and I'm going to tell you all. Oh, that brings me to favorite things. Okay. Because if you need to laugh and if you need to laugh so hard that you are crying, speaking of nonfiction shows, and you are like... Sh I just need my energy raised and I need, I just need someone to make me laugh until like I cannot funk, I can't breathe. Go watch Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee, watch the, you know, Jerry Seinfeld show, watch the Kate McKinnon, another SNL person. I could never do improv, I didn't like improv. But SNL, go do Kate McKinnon and they're in the, when they're in the coffee shop, she does this bit where she has a Scottish accent and it is like hysterical. You can't watch, you're not going to be able to watch it. You're not going to be able to watch it without dying laughing. It is so damn funny. I even think she had like Jerry Seinfeld. Well, he laughs all the time. You know, he does that silent laugh all the time. But anyway, it was so good. It's so good. So if you need to laugh and cr like to the point where you can't breathe, which, and you know, because laughter is healing, then you're releasing all those hormones to de-stress. Anyway, that Kate McKinnon, that one's a good one. And the Kristen Wiig one is so good, too. Oh, my God. Anyway. And the last thing, my last favorite things that I'm going to recommend today. Okay, you guys know I don't like fictional shows, which I told you about, except for Peaky Blinders. But then they needed more humor. Anyway, whatever. It's fine. Um, 
There's a new show on Netflix called Muster Dogs. It's called Muster because I guess muster is mustering is like when you go and herd, like the dogs go and herd the cattle or the sheep. Muster Dogs. And it's a competition show to see who can like train the muster dog effectively in a year. It's in Australia. It is so good. Maybe it's just me. I'm a dog person, but it is so good. I just love it. And you know, I love competition shows where the competitors are really like nice to each other and really sweet, which is why I really like glow up. I like nailed it. And I can watch these shows with my kids. This is another thing. There's all kinds of good television on there, but I can't watch it with my kids. So I don't have time to watch it. So I don't watch it. But the Mustard Dogs is so good. And glow up is so good. I'm so happy. Anyway. So that's my next, my le my favorite thing. And there's so much Australia stuff coming out, which is way fun. Um, you bet on Babe. What is that? What is Babe Baramu? And that, what is that? I don't know what that is. But the, and that, thanks for being with me this whole time. That was so sweet. Um, all right, everyone. I'm going to bring this live stream to a close. If you've been listening on Spotify, you freaking rock because I just got this started and I'm so excited. And very soon I'll be able to put this on Apple podcasts. I have to do a few more things. They make it a little bit harder and we're just going to keep rock and rolling. I've got like so many more steps coming in and I'm just building out the agentic feminine, a secret call to get the sheep to do what you want. Oh, I don't know. Oh, is you, are you talking from babe the movie? Cause I never watched that movie. Can you believe that? I never have seen babe the movie. Doesn't the pig die? I don't know. Anyway, I think the pig died. I'm way too overly sensitive. Does it, does it die? Um, anyway, it's hard to like inter interact. Yes, yeah, okay, that's so funny. Um, so anyway, you guys, we I've got more steps coming in. I'm letting the agentic, oh, it doesn't die? Okay, it doesn't die, I don't know. I don't know why I never watched it. It just didn't, I don't know, it just didn't seem appealing to me ever for some reason. Uh, and then my kids never wanted to watch it. Um, so I'm gonna let the agentic feminine, you know, hugs in it. I'm going to let the agentic feminine grow and be and be what she wants to be and grow in her own time. And this will all be, it'll all be okay. It'll be okay. We'll get a court ruling. We'll be able to move out of the house. I will be a good mom to these kids, a good single mom. My kids are doing great and it will all be fine. It will be fine and it will be okay. And we will make it. We will make it. So anyway, and I have so many more plans and irons in the fire that I can't wait to tell you all about. I can't wait. So hope everyone has a wonderful rest of your day. And if you're listening to this in the future, <laughs> that's so funny. And I hope the future is a good future. So anyway, okay, I'm going to end this. Peace out. Mwah. Oh, too raw. Too raw. That's a reference. Love y'all. And we'll see you later.